So I think the plan's going to be, I think I'll install the uh, motor on the uh, head with the head upside down like this. I'm also going to clean it uh, while I've got it in this position because it's going to be a lot easier to clean this whole underside when it's facing up. But um, I was looking at this and realizing that if I take this little access plate off right here and I raise the motor up from underneath, uh, it should be pretty easy to get the belt and everything back on. So that's going to be the plan. So I'll start by cleaning it. Better lighting over here. I'm just taking these uh, four screws out that hold this access cover on. Look at that. Nasty. wonder if that shreds of drive belt. It was online that I saw, I think it was actually maybe even on eBay that I saw that uh, somebody was selling a uh, drive belt, replacement drive belt for these mills. I want to say it was like 90 bucks. The belt, by the way, looks just like the kind of belt you would find in a snowmobile clutch system or an ATV, uh, uh, you know, one of those like CVT transmissions. And this basically is very similar principle. The only difference is that this doesn't automatically change the size of that sheave pulley. You actually have that lever that you change the size of the sheave with. Other than that, it's very similar. I do think I see a number on there. I think I want to take that number off of there and see if I can't cross it to a uh, more sanely priced belt. Well, at least this cleaned up nicely. Alright, let's see. This says uh, speed. Selector Incorporated 8007. I'm reading it upside down, but I'm pretty sure that's what it says. Speed Selector Inc. 8007. And I'm gonna go once we run out the belt here just to see if I see anything else written on it, but it doesn't look like it. Um, pretty satisfied that there are no other. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold the phone. We do have something else on here. Ah, oh, yeah. The uh, Speed Selector Incorporated I just wrote uh, right off. That was silk screened onto the belt, but stamped into the belt. One. Nine, two, two, V as in Victor, four, zero, three, space, eight, five. You write that down for me because I'm going to ask you later. 1922, V403, and then space, eight, five. I wonder if 85 is the year. Wouldn't be surprised. That motor is so heavy that uh, I decided that I would use some cribbing. Um, kind of had to rig up a whole stack of wood here in different ways to get this close to the correct height. 
uh, with that long skinny part that sticks up with the spring on it. It's kind of tricky. So uh, you know, the pulley's way down here. I've actually I had to kind of tilt it and get it in there. Now I'm at a height where I can lift it and put one board at a time under there and slowly edge it up to where I'm close and easily work on uh, getting that pulley in built around the pulley or sheave rather than having to try and hold this up and mess with it that way. Of course I already made sure that this is going on the right way. The electrical box, the on off switch facing towards the front of the head. Getting close now. I think I might have to put two more two by or inch and a half thick boards underneath there. This will definitely be easier with another set of hands. All right, got the belt in position. Now, all right, got the bolt started. All right, it was up later than I wanted to be doing this, but. I want to over torque these bolts because they're uh, they're mainly there to keep the thing tight against the frame and uh, keep it from being able to move obviously but when this thing's in its proper running position the weight of this motor is basically what's keeping that thing from lifting off of there so swinging this head back up at the correct position is going to be one of the next things on the agenda and that's definitely going to involve I'm going to use the uh, we'll use the shop crane to help with that because we certainly don't want to be straining the uh, straining the gear I don't want to put this worm gear in here and, and try and use that to raise all this weight that's not it's not designed for that uh, uh, like I said, I gotta call it a night. I'm getting, getting tired. Well, I got a little bit of time today, so I think uh, I'm gonna swivel the head up into the uh, uh, into the normal position. Uh, what I'll probably do is I'll probably raise it halfway up, clean the motor, and then raise it all the way up. Because once it's in, once it's all the way up, that motor is gonna be right up here to the ceiling. It's gonna be tougher to clean that. Um, but first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to retract the ram some because I've got it extended really far uh, and I, uh, I did clean clean all of the ways here I got the light surface rust that was on them off and they're looking good so now I should be able to uh, oh, I think I got this tight Oh, well that's interesting. This doesn't want to move. I don't know if I've got the ram extended too far or there's too much weight on it. Alrighty, I might have to uh okay, I might have to take a little bit of the weight off before I can uh, get that to retract. I guess you're not supposed to extend it that far. Okay, I don't have to he is elaborate with my rigging here. I it be uh, let's see. Oh, I am going to need that shackle. Alright, 
taking the weight off right there. Yeah, that makes sense because I had the uh, had the motor still the weight of the motor was still bearing on those blocks, so I, I was trying to drag that whole thing across. That wouldn't be. Yeah, that would be good. There we go. That's better. Let's see, I think maybe that's as far as I want to. Track for right now. Well, let's see if I roll the whole thing forward, I should be able to swivel it back. Too. There we go. Now I'm going to want to clear the, clean the rear of these, the back end of these ways. Um, so I'm going to retract this all the way back here to clean this later. I'm not going to do it now because this is going to be in the way. I'm not going to be able to uh, swivel it up. So let's see. I think I'll lock it down right there. Ow! <laughs> Ow! That's not the right wrench for that. Oh, they're close. Stinker. 15 sixteenths, one inch. Grabbed the one inch, started turning this nut, didn't realize it. It slipped and I just busted my knuckle. As far as the turret bolts go, I'm just going to tighten two of them because I'm probably going to end up having to swing this again. Um, Alright, so next, I think what I want to do is you know, these nuts that I put on here were just temporary because I couldn't find the correct ones. Well, lo and behold, I did find the correct ones. But what I also noticed was that this bolt right here. The threads must be bald because uh, I'm having I was having trouble getting this nut to go on. So I think what I want to do is I want to um, take this one. Yeah, I'm going to take this bolt out and see what I can do to rectify that. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the temporary nut off of this one back here. I did find what I did with all that hardware. What happened was I went to look for where I put the hardware, this rod with the worm gear, and uh, when I found that bucket, of course, that's where they were. So, happy to report I did find them because there was also these uh, large, thick washers that were not going to be uh, something my local hardware store is going to have. Alright, so there's one. Alright, so now with those two on, I can loosen this temporary one. Now, Take this bolt out as soon as I rotate this head into the uh, right position to allow that bolt to reach through that opening. Okay. Certainly wouldn't want to stick my fingers in that hole. Why? Well, because I tighten these clamping nuts, but if this were to suddenly shift, could have the effect of shearing my finger off. At the very least, mangling it very badly. Uh, okay, so there's my T-bolt that is giving me the, oops, trouble. Yeah. Damn thing to trip on. All right, where was I? So this one appears to be. Yep, just a little damage. Let me see. see if I can't figure out what the damage is. File it. In the worst case scenario, I'll have to see if I can find a die that is that size. 
Just a uh, light touch with a file there on the end, very end where there's a little bit of damage and uh, took care of that thread. These washers are, I just noticed these washers are beveled on one edge and I'm not quite sure, well, yeah, they definitely, the flat, the beveled side's gonna face out towards the nut. Okay, so now I'm going to clean up that little worm gear. It's got all the swarf and old grease and everything on it and uh, reinstall that. Tell you, there is some stuff on this gear. And it's on other parts of the machine too that it, it looks like it originally started out its life as some sort of a grease and has become, for lack of a better term, tar. <laughs> so the uh, LA Awesome was not able to tackle this. And there are a couple of spots on the machine where I've seen some of that stuff too. And it's just, it's weird stuff. So we're going to try the uh, 3M engine degreaser, which is uh, a lot more powerful see how it fares well I gotta tell you it took a lot of cleaning it was tough getting this clean but I got it pretty spotless now there are a couple of nicks here and there but nothing nothing that I think is gonna really impede the function once it's uh, in there with fresh grease on it I'm hoping it'll be okay all right so here's the uh, the rod that that gear sits on the spline and then it's locked in by an Allen screw that uh, protrudes into this groove once it's fully inserted. But I just tried putting it in after cleaning it up on the wire wheel because it had a lot of that tar-like grease on it. And uh, without the gear in there, it should slide right in. And it's not. It's a little tight. And when I shined my light down in here and took a look, I could see that that bore has a lot of that garbage grease in there or tar or whatever it is so I'm gonna get me a uh, a little wire brush well the Wells index cabinet had a whole bunch of these brushes here these are uh, these are stainless steel I mean the USA and they're really good for cleaning out holes that should do it very beginning there, it's a little rough still, but that might be a burr. Uh, I think that's going to be good enough, because once it's all the way in, it, it turns freely, which is what I wanted. Alright, time to get some grease, don some gloves. What kind of grease did I use on that gear in there? I'll just get a little on my finger and see what color it is. It's black. Oh, okay. I use that axle grease. 